Here's how long it takes to solve two edge pieces with the old Pachman method. And now with the M2 method, and with Orozco, and Ika, and 3Style. The Orozco method uses 3Cycle commutators just like for 3Style, except you solve one piece at a time. The buffer is at UF, and you memorize normally so it goes to here, which goes to here, and the helper piece is here at UR that will be also involved in every cycle. In every pair of targets to solve the first target, we do a cycle that goes from the buffer to the first target to the helper. So here's what that would look like. And for the second target in a pair, we go in the opposite direction. So the buffer to the helper to the target. So that would look like this. How the ECA method works is you find the first target and set that up to the helper first. And then you do the algorithm that goes from buffer to helper to target. So that would be the one I used earlier that would go like this. And then undo the setup move. As you saw at the start, Orozco is not always faster than M2, even though it's a more advanced method. You can think of Orozco as a stepping stone that takes you to Ika or 3Style, which are both faster than M2. First, we'll very briefly go over slice finger tricks. For S moves, you have to be able to pull with either finger and also push with either finger. Or if the hand doing the slice is out of the normal grip, then you can use your middle finger. For E moves, move your thumbs down and use your middle finger, but also hold the top layer like this to make sure that the top layer doesn't move as you do it. If one hand is out of home grip, then the other hand does all the E moves with a push or a pull, and make sure you squeeze these two layers so that they don't move. For E2, use index and then ring. And if you're doing E2, then you don't have a finger here that can do U moves anymore, so you have to do all of the U moves with this hand. For M prime, make sure you can use either of your ring fingers to push up. For M, depending on the situation, you can use your ring fingers to pull down, or if your hand is like this, you can do that. Or if none of these are comfortable, you can do two moves starting with a wide move or starting with an outer move. For M2, there's plenty of ways of doing it, but for now, we'll just do this one, which is R prime and then M prime and wide R at the same time. And also be able to do that with left hand. So here's a full list of the commutators, which will also be in the description. I'll break them down into categories like this. And remember, this is only if your target is first in the pair. If it's second, then you'd have to reverse it instead. If you have a good understanding of edge commutators, you may just be able to learn this by looking at the list. But now I'll go into an intuitive explanation of how these work. The first category is the U interchange, and that is when the buffer and the helper are going to interchange like this. And to move pieces up, we'll use the E layer. So this applies to any target that's already in the E layer or target LD or RD. So all the left side targets can go up to the right spot here. For example, this one can go up with R prime E R. This one can go up with R E prime R prime. This one with R E two R prime. And this one back here with R prime E two R. The targets on the right do the same thing, but go to the left side. For example, this one can go up with L E prime L prime. Lastly, LD can move up to the top with L prime E prime L, and RD just does the same thing on the right side. So for all these targets, once you know how to move it up to the top, then we do a commutator following these rules. You memorize in pairs, and the first target goes to the helper, and the second target goes to the buffer. So in this case, go from the buffer, I'd memorize F and then P. So for F, I need to get this one up to the helper because it's first in the pair. So that is right here, and this one can move right here, so that's perfect, I'll just move it up. And then next I need the buffer there as well because all the pieces need to end up at that spot. And now I've done my two things, so the commutator just tells me to reverse each of them in the same order. Next I'm going to P, and this one can go up to here, but it also needs to go to the buffer because it's second in the pair. That means I'll move the buffer there first before I move this up. And then next I'll also get the helper there as well. And now that I've put two things here, then the commutator is done, and I will undo. And then next, I just have to undo the setup moves, but here it's just U2 because I did U, U, which means that the U2 is just going to put everything back where it started. So the next category is the M interchange. So we have the FD, DB, and BU targets. These are all M interchange because they can all move to the buffer using M moves. So that was BU moving to the buffer. So how these work is the interchange is always just moving one of these pieces to the buffer. And the other thing you have to do is be able to move the helper to the buffer as well. And you can just do that with R, U prime, R prime, U. And that puts it here without disturbing the M slice. 
Besides that, we follow the same rules as before. So for memorization, this goes to Q, which goes to W. So how this works is first I need to do this one, which is first in the pair, and that means that it wants to go to the helper. Now, if I move it to the buffer right away, then obviously that's not going to the helper. So instead I'll move the helper over first. So R, U prime, R prime, U. And then now that the helper is here, I can move this one over with M. And then undo and undo. Next, I'm going to W, and this is second in the pair. The second one in the pair always goes to the buffer, which means I can do that right away. So just M2 puts it at the buffer, and then do the other thing, which is move the helper over as well. And then undo and undo. Now just keep in mind for BU, I move the helper in a different way because it cancels with the M moves if you do it this way. All right, so here's an example using Orozco edges, and I'll only do the first few targets so you get the idea. So looking at the buffer, this goes to G, which goes to U, and this is the buffer, so I can start a new cycle, and I can start at B, because B is an easy one, and then go to F, and then go to Q, and then R, and I'll just stop there. So starting with G, this one can go up to here, and it's a U interchange case. It's first in the pair, so I need to get the helper there first, over here, move this one up, and then get the buffer there as well, and undo, and get the buffer back where it started. Next is U, and this is second in the pair, so I need to do the reverse. Now for U, it's actually really easy. The only difference between the regular and the reverse is the direction that the single F moves go. So since this is second in the pair, I'll do Fs going this way, and then the rest is just, you pretty much just memorize this. All right, and then B, which is the helper, and if you get the helper, you do nothing, so I'll move on to the next one. This is F, and it's second in the pair, so it needs to go to here, but the buffer there first. So buffer there, move this one up, undo, and undo. Next is Q, this is an M interchange case. Since it's first in the pair, it can go here, but I want the helper here first. So I'll do R, U prime, R prime, U to get the helper here. Then M and undo and undo. And then next is R, this one uh, can go up to here, but uh, it's second in the pair, so I need the helper there first. Move it up undo and undo. All right, and I'll just stop there. Next is the ECA method. And the idea behind the ECA method is really easy. All you have to do is set up the first target in your pair to UR. Now, once you've done that, you're basically just going buffer to UR to whatever your second target is. And this would be exactly the same as a Rosco, except you're skipping your first target, just doing the second target with setup moves. So here's the same scramble again, but doing ECA instead. So this goes to G, which goes to U. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna get G up to here. So one way I could do that is with L2 to move it here and then S to move it here. So next I will just do U as if it's second in the pair for a Rosco. So that would be the same thing I did in the earlier solve, which would be like this. And then I will undo the setup moves. And as you can see, I've solved two targets at once using one Orozco algorithm, but also with setup moves. My next pair would be B and then F, but B is already set up here, so I will just do F. So this is the same as Orozco. My next one is Q and then R, which means I need to get Q over to here. Now I could do this with uh, B prime R prime. The finger tricks are not very good, so I can do R B prime R prime. And take note that this is a little bit different because I actually moved R to be here now. It's no longer where it began. So what I'll do is R B prime R prime, and then I will do this target because that's where R is now, as if it was second in the pair. So if it's second in the pair, it needs to go to the buffer first. That can be like this, and then move this one here, and then undo, undo, and undo the setup moves. Now I've solved both of those targets. So that's the idea behind Ika. You keep setting up your first target to the helper, you do the second target as if it was a Rosco, and then you undo the setup moves. But you have to remember that if your second target moved, then you shoot to that new location, not where it used to be. So one problem with Ika is the setup moves can be long or have bad finger tricks, or it moves the other piece too much and makes it hard to track. These problems can all be solved by extending Ika in two ways. The first thing you can do is also set up to UL. So here this goes to G, U, and G can really easily be set up to UL with just an S move. So now I'll do U as if it was second in the letter pair, but the mirrored version of it. So in that case, that would look like this. And then undo the setup. 
Now you've probably heard me say before that mirroring things isn't always the best way to go due to grip changing. And that is usually true, but not necessarily for three style edges because your grip tends to change all the time anyway. So in this example, this is S and then T and S is really annoying to set up to here. You could do U prime M U, but instead it's easier to just set up T to U R instead. So that can be done with R prime. And since you've set up the second letter to the helper, then you solve the first letter as if it was first in the pair. So this would look like this and then undo setup. So that's it for this tutorial. And if you're watching this and you feel like algs are gonna help you in blind, that is true. But just remember there's the entire aspect of memorization you'd wanna get good at as well. I have two videos here on the end screen that both contain a ton of tips for blind, especially memorization. So make sure you check those out because those can help you at any level. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.